So if you've made it this far, I'm assuming that your independent components analysis has gone just fine. Uh, you've encountered no problems. You've successfully pre-processed everything, run a group ICA, and now you have a data set which has your group IC maps in there. Okay? Uh, that's kind of a ridiculous assumption. Usually things go wrong, but we're just going to roll with that for now. So what we're going to do is dual regression. In other words, how are we going to specify how are we going to find out which of those components are actually significantly different? Okay, we could do a one sample t-test or we could take a, a difference between groups where we compare certain networks or components against each other. That's just something that dual regression can also do. Now, we need a couple of inputs here before we actually do the dual regression command. So after you've run your multi-session concatenated ICA command, I output everything in this Autism Controls ICA, and this melodic IC contains all those different components. Okay, if, if I open that up here, just very briefly, we, we did something similar to this a long time ago for a single subject, but now across groups, if I open up this melodic IC data set, this is going to have 30 components in it. Okay, so I can just scroll through this by using the volume button and notice that you know I might see certain networks like th this kind of looks like the default mode network you know I could threshold this differently and make it look a little bit more obvious but we may only be interested in certain subcomponents right so maybe we're not interested in all 30 maybe something like this looks more like an artifact or noise and we're not going to bother with that okay in that case you would only need to do multiple comparisons after you do dual regression on the components that you're actually interested in. So say I only have a few components, which I think uh, could reasonably be called default mode networks. I would only need to, to con uh, control for multiple comparisons with, with those three. Okay, so that's one thing we need. And another thing is this ICA list, which is a relative path to where you have your filtered functional data. Okay, so for each person, this is the same thing that I used before, right? when I was running the, the group ICA analysis. But just be sure, be sure, this is another thing which caused me a lot of grief, a lot of problems, and I have enough problems in my life. This thing didn't really help. But just remember that this needs to point to the filtered funk data that's been normalized, that's been registered to a standard space. If it doesn't, you may find that you, you know, you have a, an identically labeled thing called filtered funk data, which is a directory above this reg standard directory. Uh, in that case, dual regression is going to going to fail. It's going to poop out, and then you'll need to go through the go hunting through the error logs to find out what went wrong. So make sure this points towards the filtered functional data in the reg standard directory. Okay, so that's that's all that dual regression needs. So I type in dual regression, and I give it the name of my group. Independence components, independent components data set. Okay, so here it's melodic IC dot NII dot GZ. That should be, just be the default what it's named. Uh, the next option, one means to variance normalize the time courses. This is recommended, just, just leave this as one. Just, just leave it like that. Now these next couple options are kind of strange. So I could just type negative one, and that tells dual regression, run a one sample t-test. Okay, if you've specified something through GLM GUI, like we did a couple tutorials ago, to be a one sample t-test, and instead of negative one, you entered ICA GLM dot mat, and ICA underscore GLM dot con, let's say that was the output from specifying a one sample t-test, that would do the same thing. Okay? That would do exactly the same thing. But if I just have negative one, that means do a one sample t-test. The next option is number of permutations. So the more permutations you do, the better, the more accurate it's going to be at determining the actual uh, p-value of these different components. Similar to 3D plus sim if you've done that through AFNI. Okay, lastly, well, well, penultimately, it needs an output directory. I call this ICA.dr for dual regression, and then a list of paths to all those filtered functional data sets. Now, uh, as before, what, what I did in the previous tutorial, I, I'm referencing a lot of stuff from previous videos. It's going to make sense if you watch those. I can just concatenate what's in this list right here, and that'll just automatically expand it, put it in the command, 
and everything will go. Everything will be fine. So I'm just going to call it temp because I've, I've done this before, just showing you that this thing will actually run. Okay, so you should see something like this, creating common mask. Then we'll say running dual regression. Then we'll say running and sorting all of those different components. Now, remember, if I wanted to do this with, uh, say, an uh, uh, independent samples t-test, an unpaired t-test, I actually would put in this uh, icagom.mat, icagom.con, and then number of permutations. Okay, so, similar thing. Okay, so that's it. That's all you need to do to run it. Uh, very, very lastly, I, I keep saying this, but very lastly, very last video that we'll then cover, we're going to talk about how you actually look at these components and run a brief command to test for their significance.